Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to War Thunder. This is the High Dragon's Breath, Bow Wow, welcoming you to an episode of Low, Low Land Sea Thunder. I have so many things that I'm so excited to show you guys, but we have two problems. Number one, they're in many different tech trees. I have a new French tank. I have new Italian tanks. I have new Japanese tanks. I have new British boats. I have new USSR boats. I have new German boats. I might. I have a new German vehicle as well. I have a Panther D here. I have the new USA. I got the M5A1, which I've never had. And then in aviation, I have all these new boats that I've never shown you guys. So, what I have decided is to start off with some of the more fun ones to play. These aren't necessarily the best vehicles in the game, because as you know, with the uh, British, uh, uh, of course, the Royal Navy is the most incredible thing in the world, but uh, War Thunder has uh, given us a couple vehicles to work with, and they're, they're kind of funny. Uh, obviously, a lot of these are locked until further testing or until you buy, but we have the Vosper Series 1 and the MTB-11 Series. There's a Vosper 2 and a Farmil A ML-100, which I assume is a 100-ton uh, vessel. But, or at least has 100 tons of displacement, displacement. These are pretty basic torpedo boats, but the thing about them is simply how many 7.7mm uh, <laughs> Lewis machine guns. If you can see here, this is something I've never seen. A, a man-handled quad mount of 7.72 millimeter machine guns. Two turrets with four machine guns each. And as you can imagine, these do fire in four round bursts at fully automatic uh, fire rate. So it's almost like a whirlwind of bullets when you can get these on target. And for the Vosper Series 1, you can fire 360 degrees. All of these are main caliber turrets, so they're all aimable and fireable individually. The one downside with having this many machine guns, obviously, is uh, their penetration. Even with armor-piercing belts, you only get 10 millimeters of penetration, so firing below the waterline at enemy gun turrets and at the enemy crew is rather difficult if they have armor. If they do not have armor, these guns shred. And they're also, since they are machine guns rather than cannons, they do have a limited range. Excuse me, Diet Coke. And uh, the planes we're going to be trying out today, well, not trying out, but the thing that I'm going to be using most today is the VK-156B1. Just a few notes uh, as we get into battle here. Uh, between the two of them, I like the M MTB-11 series, because as opposed to the to the uh, Vosper, uh... I don't like it when the torpedo tubes are canted outward to the side. Just uh, kind of a pet peeve of mine. I like to aim with my bow uh, rather than use the viewer because it seems to be a lot faster. Even though I probably will be aiming with the viewer now that I know how to use it correctly and I'm more practiced with it. And I also, this seems to have a lot more firepower, though it's much more difficult to get on target. Uh, with this, if you get a turret on target, uh, you can do a lot more damage. But with this one, it's way easier to get a turret uh, on target with only half the actual uh, potential firepower. And of course, with the British, there is no armor on any of these vessels to protect crew or the like, but uh, they are decently fast. The M the MTB is not as fast as, I as you'd expect, but the Vosper is decently fast with plenty of uh, little pluses in the way of almost everything except for survivability. You're very exposed on the top. All of your crew members are in these turrets or in this one area. Uh, your radio station is right below here. And the MTB is very similar. All of your crew's in one area. If you get hit with a large enough caliber gun, it's simply going to wipe your crew. Um, but other than that, we're going to see how we can do on domination on Norway. Three, uh, we're going to take all belts of AP uh, ammunition. Since we don't have any incendiary to give our bullets any extra damage, we're just going to go for punch through armor. Get our full 10 millimeters of penetration possible for out of these guns. All right, let's go. And just to give you an idea of how we really are just using machine guns, uh, 772 is only, as most people know, a tiny, tiny bit larger than 7.62. So we're firing... Something just a tiny bit bigger than an AK-47's bullet here. Uh, basically, 
the Lewis machine gun is infantry use mostly. And that's really how it should be used. I don't know why they're on these boats. Not that I have a problem with it. I mean, I'm just saying design-wise it doesn't doesn't make a lot of sense. LS over there. Uh, and you see, at, when we're at range it gets a lot more difficult. But when we get closer we'll be able to deal more damage. There we go. Wow, that was just great. Could you die, maybe? Please? Be nice and die for me? Alright, turning into port. German. Yeah, I think he's got some armor on him, but... Not too bad. Probably not a smart idea to go charging in there, but really, it does kind of take that. This is the APIT, right? Yeah. The API is a lot of armor-piercing and a lot of armor-piercing incendiary, so you're able to deal more damage more quickly. But as you can see with these... Oh my gosh. It's like firing a shotgun blast a little bit, so you don't need to be necessarily perfectly on target every round. But you do need a lot more aiming with these guns, or at least more time to aim them than you do with the other type. Oh gosh. Come on. There we go. Rounds down range of this boat. Oh crap. LS coming in. Uh, ah, that second one's kind of hard to get on target. That was a torpedo? No, he hit our ammunition. Lucky 15 millimeter shell. Lucky shot. Good shot, too. But still lucky. Yeah, alright. We're still going to go for A. Come on, stitch him. There we go. He's stitched. It works best when you're aiming into them so your guns don't have to depress all that much. Because this uh, weapon system doesn't depress very well. Because, you know, you are a crew member aiming it downward with your, with your hands. I can't see anything. There we go. Torpedo to port. Turning in. Alright. Rounds down range. Harder target. This is the American, I believe. Oh. No, is that another... It's gotta be another Brit. I gotta reload. Ah, crap. Well, that didn't give us much results. Probably because we were on a hard map. But this guy's just beached. That is unfortunate. VKB1, we can absolutely... We can mess with this. This is absolutely doable. Matter of, th matter of fact, we can thrive with this on. Just gonna give it a minute to get into combat. <clears throat> uh, as this is a dive bomber, we'll take our three bombs and probably go to the most heavily populated area of the map. Uh, though we aren't that fast, going only about 320 miles an hour right now at altitude. But we can speed up a little bit when we dive. So just talking about this uh, British whole British conundrum, uh, and the fact that they're 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 doing this with the Italians too. They're slowly releasing boats as they're like tested and kind of eased into the game. I think it's a very smart way for Gaijin to implement stuff like that, but uh, it is also quite annoying. Not that I'm angry about it. I mean, yeah, make the game balanced, make it fit, make it fix fix all the issues that. Uh, they have, and same thing with the Italians, they have issues, and, like, they need to be fixed, but, you know, maybe don't say you'll release them, and then don't actually release them. I don't know, just seems a little bit backward to me, this, that you would say something, and then do, like, part of it, but I get, you know, you need to make money. Oh, good shot with a hull break. Alright, we're going to keep ourselves going here on an upward curve to try and get to more motor torpedo boats and the like. Keep our gunner alive. Come on, gunner. Come on, gunner. It's an 
LS and a torpedo boat. If we can get a direct shot on the LS, great. If we can't, we leave them. It's another LS. Okay, well, you're our target then. Ah, hit, no kill. Pulling up, pulling out, and we're gone. There's a CR-42 that was firing at us. I think he's chasing uh, another guy. BB-1. Our Browning 7.7s probably will not hit him, but... We can try. Good kill. Good plane kill. As I said, this is basically a copy of the American, and thus has some great anti-plane capabilities. Our engine is currently under some serious stress. It's taken a lot of bullets. Uh, you know, as it does. I'm gonna go under this HS-123 and climb, climb, climb. And then pull off the gas and just coast for a bit. And our engine is out. Darn it. Darn it, darn it, darn it. Put it to a weapon and we're gonna get this PT-20. There's no way I'm dying without getting this kill. Come on. Die! Perfect hull break. Good shot. Well done. Alright. Well, we didn't do too great, but uh, we can return to hangar and try again, as usual. Or, actually, I may... You know what? I'm gonna go do the Americans. I just showed you everything that the British have to offer. This is basically all that they have right now. Uh, I will come back and show you one of their premium vehicles. Actually, I think I'll do a premium... Yeah, I'll do this. I'll do the premium... Uh, the premium destroyer or battleship. But we're going to jump into a quick uh, game with the Americans. Yeah. So the Americans have a few more boats. Uh, the 80-foot PT and the 80-foot nasty. Uh, most of the Americans rely on 20 mils, 50 cals, and 40 millimeter Bofors, which are wonderful guns. But later on, uh, instead of the British getting larger caliber guns, the Americans mount a lot of anti-tank guns, so more Bofors. Uh, pretty much all of these have... Oh, yeah, and then there's an 81mm uh, mortar, which is... Sim yeah, and then, like, there's 3-pounder uh, and 3-inch guns. So 76mm guns are, like, the medium tier, and mortars are the secondary weapons. So, other things we'll be playing with, the TBD-1. Uh, we have the Higgins. The Higgins 78-foot PT-71. The Elko 77 uh, PT-20. And the... Higgins 81 PT-6. So, the PT-6 is the reserve, the Elko is the 1.7, and the Higgins is the 1.7 version of the other Higgins, obviously. Uh, now, um, the American boats generally really do rely on their torpedoes a lot, which is why they have four of them. Make giving them a lot of area control, uh, being able to cut off enemy routes so they can side... Uh, go side on and put their 50 cals down range because you can't aim very well with the 50 cals uh, straight in front of you. A lot of them can't connect very well because you're not allowed to depress. There's a steel ri ring uh, beneath the mount that doesn't let you depress in front in case you shoot, you know, a crewman in the back of the head. But, uh, let's do this one first. So this has, uh, obviously, 50 caliber machine guns and then a 20 millimeter rear gun. And this is the improved versions of the Higgin, the Higgins 81 foot PT6. All right, and as you can see, 20 millimeter in the back, two double mounted 50 cal's in front, and these ones do not connect in front. Oh well, I guess they can, but they have to be elevated, so you can't can't shoot at something directly in front of you. But you can shoot at something at medium to long range. So we're gonna put down some asset denial here for any crossers and. One, and two. Let's hope those make it onto target, but opening up at range here. 50 cals, you probably want to aim them at larger targets and just pepper them. Honestly, at this range, you're not going to be picking anyone off or sniping, but you can still put holes in the larger boats. There we go. Damage crew members and such, just decrease their percentage until you can get closer and actually deal damage. And then, of course, you can bring the, t the tail 20 mil around. And let that thing get a good piece of them. Yeah, there we go. He's getting it. There's an MTB. There's a German over there. Got a fire.
Torpedoes in front. That's gonna miss us. Nope. Ah, crap. Turned into it a little slow. But, not too bad. A great first engagement by them, and a very good first engagement by our team. We have full caliber AP belts, so most of these bullets that we have are gonna go through armor. The highest that a machine gun will at this tier, which is 26 millimeters, which is great. And uh, this boat has a very high front, uh, but you do have more enclosed 50 caliber machine guns. So let's let's go over there. I feel like a lot of our issues came from that direction, so let's send most of our torpedoes down that way. Make sure that anyone who's coming, you want to like kind of isolate their the enemy team. So if they want to all gang up on one point. You can let a couple go past and then send the rest of your torpedoes. There we go. Got into his hull. Send the rest of your torpedoes to dis dissuade his comrades from following him into battle. Just gonna get rid of that viewer so it's not in my way. Uh, 50 cals online. He's got a fire, definitely. There's a crew knockout. As you can see, as opposed to the 7.7s, these 50 cals are great weapons. There's another one. Alright, there's a PT-7 stuck on the rocks over there. See if we can get a couple rounds on him before we go... Yeah, there we go, there's our third kill. Perfect. Perfect. This is way better than I normally do with the Americans. Good. We're on target. He's right past us. I'm really glad he didn't release those. And there's our fourth kill. Perfect. Okay, so uh, the 50 cal has been in service for it's 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 the longest lasting service weapon for a reason. We know this now. Yeah, I know. I'm on course. I I, I know where I'm going. There's no smoke in front of me. So we're just gonna send out those. Uh, they're kind of torpedoes of opportunity, or what I like to call these uh, quad torpedoes, because you know they may hit something, they may not. Uh, you may get a kill, you may not. And you may just cause someone to not go for this point. Like, that's entirely acceptable. There's an LS3 over there. We have some holes in our hull. Oh, whoa. 15 centimeter machine... Or 15 millimeter machine gun. That is a ballsy German. Alright, let's play with the TBD. This has a, a 1,200 pound bombs, but uh, it's really slow, and it can't drop straight down, as you can see the aiming reticle gets weaker and weaker, so you kind of have to come in at an angle, and then follow a boat to drop a pair of bombs, and you kind of get make up for it in the fact that they have a lot more uh, tonnage, and you can carry 12 of them, as you can see under my wings, as opposed to the 3 or 4 carried by other planes. It's a bit like the Junker, just worse in every way. And I, I wish I just had the classic long Junker 88, but that doesn't come until, I don't know, it's like 2.3, 2.7 is the, the real Junker. The one that carries like 14 250 kilogram bombs. Oh, there we go. He knows I'm, he knows I'm coming. Yeah. I know where you are, bud. Just to make sure he's dead. He's dead. Alright, let's kill this guy. Come on, buddy. That was not a kill. I'm a little bit behind him. There's four. That's a kill. LS right here. There's another kill. Last bomb underneath that wing. This LS should be our food. There we go. Let's drop it now, or drop it a little bit. Uh, hit, but no kill. We're gonna get points for that hit, at least. We have our back gunner ready to defend us, and we are on a 47 second reload for those bombs. Let's get this G5 with our single 7.7 .7 machine gun. We can pepper him. That's the best we can do, pretty much. It's a PT-20, however, that we can deal some damage to, because he's... I don't know if... if I, I don't know if open-topped vehicles, like, work in War Thunder yet for boats. Like, I don't know if him being open-topped allows me to deal more damage to his crew, or... Oh! Well, there's a kill. Not bad. Not bad. 
is a Sea Fury, but we do have 14 seconds on our bomb reload. And we aren't all that damaged. Uh, unlike the hole in my right wing would tell you, we have not taken all that much damage. And there's a G5 right here. Bombs are reloaded. And he is dead. He is not dead. Oh my gosh, how did he survive that? It was like a direct 100, 100 pound bomb hit. Alright, well, he's going to be sitting there for a while, ain't he? Dive, dive, dive. I do not want this TBD on top of me. Then again, I don't want you surviving. Whoa! Okay, this guy is going to take literally all 12 of my bombs to kill? Come on. Come on, bud. Just die. Just keel over and die. There we go. He's dead. Why did I do that? Because I felt like it. Was it petty? Yeah, probably. Was it worth it? Yes. Because now I get to play out the uh, the final boat that I'm going to play out for you today. The Higgins 81 foot PT-6. Uh, of which I have three in reserve. So, this one is fully decked out. As opposed to the rest of my Americans, which are kind of unfleshed and not really completed in the skill tree. This thing has everything that it has. It could possibly have. All of its heavy armor-piercing ammunition has been unlocked. And its smoke. And its bombs. And... Basically, this is the best that you can get this vehicle. Except for, you know, crew skills, which... You know, who needs those anyways? Me, because I like reloading fast. And this is one of those ones where, yeah, you can depress a little bit right in front of you and fire. Which is nice. It's a lot more, uh... But they are only firing single machine guns. That's the downside. You, uh, you trade off less machine gun firepower for more machine gun accuracy and... I guess maneuverability, if that's what you want to call it, but I'm technically not maneuvering it, you're just aiming it. So, let's just say accuracy, because that sounds better. This TBD definitely has bombs. Just ward them off a little bit, put some smoke down. Anything chasing us? Because now it's an air battle. Now they're going to see if they can just pick off all our boats on the ground. But uh, we're going to go to sea and get ourselves, hopefully, some, some points. We're going to use these 50 cals as anti-aircraft, even though I don't think they're rated for that. Threat in the air, yeah, I know. There's threat everywhere. Oh, Lord. It's freaking me out, because, like, the smoke is two things. It, it makes it impossible for you to see, and it makes it easy for the enemy to see where you're going. If you're not smart with it. This Russian... Gotta look where I'm going. There's the TBD. And the S and the SBD. Which are very similar planes now that I think about it. Alright. We're gonna put up our, some smoke with our G5 buddy here. And as well, we're gonna put some artillery right where they're gonna come. Because it is it, it is kind of po it is possible for them to be hit by artillery or at least to be damaged by it if they come close to the water as that TBD is wont to do. Since, as you saw, he can't drop bombs from a, a vertical position. We got our last zone, and this should be a victory on my plate. Alright. The other thing about these, uh, this boat, especially, is it's, it's pretty fast. It is pretty spicy fast. Yeah, and I'm going through my own artillery field, but I, I don't care. It's time to spawn camp. See if they bring in any last boats. Like, if these guys J out and they bring in boats, they could, in theory, stall the game with two different uh, caps. And we only have four boats left, which is not a guarantee that we will win. They are way out to sea, though. I don't know what they're doing out there. I don't know what they hope to accomplish because... Oh, there we go. And we are first on the team with nine targets destroyed, an enemy kill assist, and one zone captured. Total score of 2220. And that was a successful game as compared with the British one. So I guess the Americans are the better of the two. Who knew? Britannia doesn't rule the waves in my games. And wow, new turret, new rudder replacement. So much new stuff for the Americans. As I said, a lot of stuff needs upgrading in my tree. And uh, I've just started, so... I consider it a lot of work done very quickly. So, just comparing uh, the American to the British. I want to do the British... 
Actually, well, I suppose this one... Which of you has more armor? That's all that matters to me. Alright. So, the American is kind of more classic. It's the Co... The Cow... Coal? I think it's the Coal. Uh, it has 127mm guns in turrets. It has 10 torpedoes, as far as I can tell. Uh, not a ton of armor. I believe the British one is absolutely loaded with armor, uh, as far as I could tell. Let's take a look. Preview. No, I guess it's not. Well, we know which one we're playing. The one with more armor. Always, always the one with more armor. So, let's preview this. Uh, 127 millimeter guns, I believe, uh, are the, yep. High explosive penetration, 35 millimeters. AP, or armor piercing high explosive ammunition, 146 millimeters. And, uh, the variable time fuse shell is 35 millimeters again. There's 40 millimeter Bofors that have, you know, the normal AP clips. And then you can get six land, six, uh, water mines. And, of course, very large 2,000 pound torpedoes. So. Let's give this a test sale with our mines, armor-piercing high explosive, and uh, AP clips for the 40 mils. Perfect. And uh, now I, I expect to have no resistance from anything in this custom battle, but uh, I want to see the range on these guns. And as you can see, this I love that I love that this uh, this viewer is here. It's absolutely beautiful. And I didn't know about it till a little while ago, but. Let's give a broadside, or at least a concept of what a broadside can be in this vehicle, or in this boat. Come on. Flack ahead and turn hard left. We're going to bring all guns to bear right there. That is a dead German. Oh, yeah. We're going to send ourselves out to a hard right. I feel like this is a new cu custom battle map, but I may be completely wrong. He's on fire, and... Oh my gosh. This is one of the things I love about the Americans, as opposed to the Germans and the British, where they try and, like, armor, or at least, like, minimally protect their sailors. The Americans just let them sit there on AA mounts and all this other stuff, because they can. Whoa. Those were way high. I have no idea where those are coming down, but... These AP should be fine. Those look a little bit forward, actually. Yeah, most of those are forward, so we're going to fire a little bit farther back. Yep, those were all ahead. Maybe those will be, too. Wow. I guess these things have some nice velocity to them. Not great... Ah, whoa. I was just about to say, not great accuracy, and then it blew up the uh, ammunition storage, so... Who am I to judge? We're going to take another set of pot shots at this light cruiser. Not with our full ammo load, but rather with these three guns. So let's bring our other guns online with a one. And we're going to wait for everything to reload. And two. Uh, let's give them some... Three. Oh, this is a freighter, isn't it? Yeah. Or it's a light cruiser, I suppose. We have all... We oh, wait, we have five torpedoes in in the water. And there's the other five. Now we're not getting a lot of armor penetration with these 127 millimeters. Very surprising, but we are sparking up some fires on their boat. Let's drop these uh these mines out to either side of us just to get a little nice thumbnail pick. Boom. Now, uh, there's been some rumors that because of these mines and because of recent testing at Gaijin, there's been, like, confirmed reports that we may have submarines, uh, say, this time next year or sometime around that. I would say it's possible. I wouldn't say it's the worst thing in the world either. Some people are treating it like, you know, it's the end of the world. We absolutely don't need this. It's a mistake. Please don't do it. But, you know what? I honestly, I would not care uh, if they did or did not. It does not matter to me. It's none of my business. They run it how they want to, but I would enjoy playing against submarines and actually having a reason to use those depth charges and having a reason to use uh, all these torpedoes that we have other than just using them for ships. But, you know, it's not up to me. I'm just going to wait for these torpedoes to find their target and I'm going to get a little closer for my armor-piercing ammo to actually, you know, pierce armor, as the name would suggest. Alright, there we go. 
not doing any damage to crew and very little structural integrity. I think it might this might be like the Russian or British cruiser that has most of its fuel at the sides and that creates most of its armor. But I don't know why they're not taking damage to the crew. They have fire literally everywhere. This is crazy. Alright, well, we're gonna get it a little closer. I yeah, by the way, I'm hundred percent determined to kill these whenever I get into a custom batch, so if it annoys you if it annoys you, then click off, but if it doesn't, just stay with me. Bear with me, please, until I kill this thing. Alright. I don't know how... I don't know what light cruiser this is, but I guarantee... I'll, I'll bet... I'm willing to bet you that it's British. For a couple reasons. Alright, there's a little bit of damage to the crew. I don't understand how the torpedoes haven't hit yet. There's a fire on the crew deck. Rounds are coming in literally just about as they fire, so a little bit faster than they're taking damage, we are dealing it out. So they have fire on every deck, on every floor. I want to hit an ammo uh, dump, but as you can see, I'm hitting a lot of fuel, but not a lot of ammunition or any of the engines. So that's a really effective uh, protection if you don't have to worry about your engines overheating, and if you have, there we go, secondary guns are opening up. Now we should be able to deal a little more damage, because I have AP on for those 40 mils. Fire going in. I think they're still out of range for any real damage. Oh no, this, this is... Is this German? It has the, uh... The red flag at the back for the Kriegsmarine. I guess it must be German. Huh. I haven't looked a lot at the German, uh, high tier, just because I've actually been enjoying myself playing the, uh the lower tier boats and such. Very much an enjoyable time playing those. We're going to try and take out his transmission, or transmissions, plural. They are definitely sinking. Okay. That's going right into his deck. I don't know how this is not... He's not already dead. This is insane How he, that he's not dead already. How in the heck is that thing staying up? Is this the Bismarck? That's not a light cruiser, that's a battleship, so like that wouldn't make sense, right? But it looks a little bit like it. Nah, it's too small. It's too small. I'm just saying that because it looks like it's listing to one side. Kind of reminiscent of the, how the Bismarck uh, did. And it has that, you know, new age technology armor. I still need to look that up. The Bismarck's... Uh, Torpedo resistant armor that failed against the fairy swordfish. Oh, I'm about to scrape a landmass. Yeah, there we go. It's a 37% water line, uh, so he'll be dead soon. There we go. She sank. Alright, well, it's been a pleasure. I'm afraid this went a little long because of, you know, armor penetration issues, but as usual, I uh, hope everyone had a happy new year. Hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you have a wonderful day.